Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jess and today I'm gonna to be doing some batch cooking. So I often find that when I batch cook things, I find it a lot easier to stay on track because things meals are just readily available to grab. Um, either on the go or just when I can't be bothered to cook to be quite honest so yeah today I'm gonna be making six different meals Um, I plan for two different breakfasts two different lunches and two different evening meals so that's the kind of vibe that I'm hoping to go for today Um, I'm hoping that it's not gonna take too long to do because I know especially the breakfasts they really don't take very long at all so yeah they should be done quite quickly and then I think even like the lunches might be not too bad so yeah excited um so yeah I'm gonna be making them I am just gonna start with the breakfasts um get those out of the way because they do just need to go in the fridge I'm gonna be making some chia puddings and some overnight oats so um and both are gonna be white chocolate because I've got this obsession with white chocolate at the minute um I flavor everything with white chocolate so well everything that I can anyway so I'm gonna be starting with them and then we'll just progress on probably to the lunches and then the evening meals last so yeah um let me grab everything that I need to for the breakfast and we'll just crack on and just get started so these are the jars that I'm going to be using for the breakfast uh, they came as a pack of six actually and they were from Poundland I think it was only like three pounds for the pack of six which I think um well, I need to give that one a wash um which I think isn't too bad for these and they are glass and yeah they're really nice so that is what I'm going to be using I'm just going to make three of the chia pudding and then three of the overnight oats Okay, so first up we're gonna be making the chia pudding. I'm gonna be making three portions of this. This is probably one of my favorite go-to breakfasts at the minute and it is so, so easy to make. So some facts about chia seeds that one tablespoon of chia seeds consists five grams of fiber. They can absorb up to nine times their weight in liquid and they're loaded with antioxidants. They're rich in healthy fats and they're just a great, a great thing. And I'm just putting three tablespoons of them in along with half a cup of milk in each once you've popped these in the fridge for a couple of hours the chia seeds absorb the milk and it creates like this pudding like consistency in terms of the flavoring I'm just popping a few drops of the white chocolate drops in there and then giving them a good shake up and popping them in the fridge don't get me wrong it does look a little bit like frog spawn but trust me it is absolutely delicious and now with the remaining three jars we're just gonna be making some overnight oats now watch me make an absolute mess of this I can't even tell you how annoying this was. I was just getting them absolutely everywhere. I tried really hard, guys, but it just wasn't working, so I ended up giving up. Um, but I'm just basically putting in a whole cup of oats and then followed by a cup of oat milk, or I'm using oat milk. You don't have to. You can use dairy if you want. Um, and then basically when you pop this in the fridge overnight, the oat milk is absorbed by the oats and it makes this nice kind of creamy textured oats. I think I learned about over my oats first when I started Slimming World. I don't do Slimming World anymore but it is stuck with me. I do really enjoy them. So again I'm just putting a few drops of the white chocolate flavouring in there as well. Trust me this makes all the difference if you love a sweet breakfast. And then just like the chia pudding we're going to be giving the jars a quick shake before popping them in the fridge so that they can do their thing in there and then these are great for just a grab and go breakfast and great for popping in your bag and taking to the office. Okay, so that is the breakfast completely done. They took like not very long at all, maybe it's like 15 minutes tops, if that. Um, moving on to lunches. So I'm gonna be making a soup and, what was the other one? Oh yeah, a crustless quiche. So for the soup, I'm gonna be, I found the recipe on online somewhere. I'll see if I can link it. It's an American based website. So it's got things like, it's a chicken and bacon ranch soup. Um, and one of the ingredients was, like powdered ranch dressing which like ranch dressing is quite hard to get hold of in the UK in general anyway but I, there's no ranch seasoning otherwise like that I didn't have to order off Amazon or something like that so um, I actually googled like what needs to go in it and I've got the seasonings instead and we're just gonna add add it to the soup so yeah Um so for this we've got out um, some chicken, I'm just going to be using two chicken breasts, some bacon, a chicken stock cube, some soft cheese and then these are the seasonings that you need for the ranch dressing. So we've got garlic granules, dill, 
onion granules and parsley um not the gin in the background that was a birthday present we'll move that so yeah and that is literally all i need for this recipe and i'm just going to be putting it in i've got like a morphe richards soup maker so i'm going to be putting it in there if you don't have a soup maker then you can literally just like boil it all together like cook it separately boil it and then blend it that's all that's all it is um and i'm going to set that away and whilst i've like whilst that's cooking that's when i'm, I'm going to be starting the next recipe so for this soup you do need to make sure that you've cooked off your meat first before popping it into the soup maker this is just to make sure that it is definitely cooked through so i pop my chicken into a pan and then just browned that off and made sure that it started the cooking process i then added in my bacon medallions i ended up using i think about four of these um so then it would work out as one bacon medallion per portion um and then i cooked that in with the chicken until it was all cooked through thoroughly i then put aside some of the chicken and bacon for the end and then put the rest into the soup maker So here I'm just putting in a litre of chicken stock. It does say to put in a whole litre on the recipe. However, in hindsight, I wish that I had only put half in because it ends up really, really watery. I then put in the tub of soft cheese followed by the seasoning. And then I put it onto the smooth setting mode. I think it takes about 20 minutes. And then whilst that was cooking, I just carried on with the next recipe. Whilst it's doing its thing in the soup maker, I'm going to be starting on a ham and broccoli crustless quiche. So I believe this one is also Slimming World using like one of your healthy A's. I think it's Slim Sin Free. Don't count me on that. It was when I was doing Slimming World. Might not be now because they change things quite a lot at Slimming World. But yeah, so I've turned the oven on, got that ready. And these are the ingredients that are going in it. So we've got broccoli, obviously, and um, the ham. Got some cheddar cheese there, some parmesan cottage cheese and then four eggs and it is actually really really easy this one so i'm just going to start off by boiling the broccoli so for the quiche i'm just going to be cutting up some broccoli and popping it in a pan to boil i don't actually weigh this because there's barely any calories in it anyway and then just going to be grating up 60 grams of cheddar cheese the the grating of this did not go um to plan but it doesn't really matter as long as it's just in small little chunks um so i grated that up and then put that to one side i then cracked four eggs into my nutribullet I then put in 30 grams of the cheddar cheese. This is just half of what I had grated earlier. 180 grams of cottage cheese and then 30 grams of Parmesan cheese. I then popped that on the blender and blended it until it made this really nice creamy looking consistency. Once the broccoli was done, I just poured that into my little quiche dish. I don't have a proper quiche dish, but this one just does the trick. I then just cut the broccoli down into smaller pieces, added in my ham slices. And then once I've got those in, I get gave it a little bit of a mix just to make sure that it was evenly distributed. Once this was done, I popped in the rest of the cheddar cheese that I grated earlier, along with the rest of the Parmesan, and then also mixed that in again. I then poured over the mixture that I blended and then just patted down the broccoli just to make sure those little bits didn't burn in the oven. I then just popped it in the oven for about 40 minutes. Okay, so now that that is in the oven, I've just got my boxes out because this has just pinged about five minutes ago. Perfect timing. Um, and I'm just going to be pouring it into these. Ideally, I would like to have some like soup boxes, but we're just working with what we've got. And I'm just going to evenly portion that out into hopefully four portions. They might look quite shallow because of obviously the um, length of them, but yeah. Whilst I'm just portioning out the soup, I did just want to quickly touch on how I portion things, how I know that they're all equal, etc. If you're calorie counting, it does come in handy. However, ultimately, if you're eating a certain number of calories per day, you will also be eating a certain number of calories per week. Therefore, even if the portions are slightly different, it doesn't really matter because ultimately, regardless of when you eat the calories, the calories over the whole week will be eaten in total so i hope that makes sense i feel like it doesn't but ultimately no matter when you eat it as long as you eat a certain amount of calories per week it doesn't matter how big the portions are because the overall size of the full batch is going to be consumed at some point 
I then just put the remainder of the chicken and bacon from earlier evenly into each of the soups. Right, so the quiche is in the oven and I'm going to be moving on to the risotto. So this is one of the evening meal recipes that I'm going to be making. And in this, we just have some chicken breast, mushrooms, bacon lardons. I'm just going to use like one half of this pack. Um, some dry white wine, some chicken stock. I've got some cheddar there and I forgot to get out. Where are you? There we are. <laughs> the most important part. The risotto rice let's crack on with this one so once again i'm just going to be cutting up some chicken into some bite-sized portions i think i used two chicken breasts here i then used my vegetable chopper to do the mushrooms it was 250 grams of mushrooms let me tell you this vegetable chopper is a lifesaver especially when you want to make things that small i'll pop a link in the description i then just fried off my chicken until it had browned and then I added in my bacon lardon. So I personally do like to have my bacon quite crispy. So I did fry this off for quite a while until they were nice and crispy. I then added in my mushrooms. Now this looks like it's been absolutely overloaded with mushrooms, but trust me, they do fry down and shrink. I then made up my stock. So it is 1500 mils. So one and a half liters of chicken stock. Stirred that around just to mix it up. 150 mils of dry white wine. I just got one from Aldi and then I just popped in my risotto rice I did put it in dry just you have to wait until it turns translucent before adding the liquid so I mixed it around and then added in the dry white wine and just let that soak up into the risotto recipe once I'd done that as you can see in the back my quiche is ready so I just took that out of the oven very quickly I then added in my first lot of stock so because there is so much stock you just need to add it in gradually wait for the rice to absorb whatever stock there is and then just keep gradually adding it until you're done okay so now the um risotto is just bubbling away basically what i'm going to do is i'm just going to gradually add the stock cube as the risotto is absorbing um, and whilst that's doing that because it does is a little bit of a lengthy process i'm then going to start on the next one i did just want to show you though because the quiche has just um has just come out looks amazing i'm going to wait for that to cool down a little bit um before cutting it into its portions for the final one i can't remember if i said this or not but i'm making a chicken curry now this is probably one of the fastest most easiest ones um if you want you can start make a curry from scratch i however <laughs> i don't have the facilities for that mate so i'm just going to cheat and use the mayflower curry sauce because i actually really like this and i don't think i would make i don't think i could make one which would be as nice so i'm gonna use that I've got my chicken breast there and some mushrooms and I've just got this out to show you because I'm not going to be putting this in now. I'm just going to be basically making the, the chicken curry and this is what I would usually eat with it. So this just stays in the cupboard and I just cook it as and when I'm going to be eating it. So with this one, once again, we are cutting our chicken breast into bite-sized pieces. Again, I used two chicken breasts for this. I then just popped it in the frying pan and browned it off. For the curry sauce I did just weigh out 120 grams of the curry powder I then added in some cold water and then popped it on the hob and just let that cook until it was thickened up I then just cut some mushrooms into the pan with the chicken a lot of people talk to me about the knife and say to be careful but these knives are as blunt as anything trust me I am fine once the curry sauce is thickened and the chicken and mushrooms have cooked thoroughly, you can just add that into the pan. I love this because you can literally add anything you want. Sometimes I add some peas or some onions um, and it is just so delicious. I then portioned them out into the Tupperware box and that is that one done so quick. Now that the quiche has cooled down a bit, I'm just going to be putting it into portions. So I flip this over with a plate and then it should just let itself go the next part you just have to hold your breath and say your prayers and just flip it over as quickly as you can but how delicious does that look honestly it is so so good okay so the risotto is now done i've this is the cheese that you're supposed to grate into it but i'm just gonna ugh, i can't be bothered to grate it if i'm perfectly honest so i'm just gonna stir it in and let it melt because it, it's just going to melt anyway, doesn't it? Regardless of whether it's uh, grated or thrown in as chunks. 
So I'm just gonna do that and then dish up into the portions. So I've pushed, just done my portions there. I have just put three in the Tupperware boxes to cool and then one portion in a bowl. To be honest, it's currently five to eight and the thought of making something different for tea is just an absolute no-go. So I'm gonna have one of the portions of risotto for my tea tonight. I'm gonna end this video in the morning um, just cause I just wanna sit for a bit. I'm absolutely knackered, not gonna lie. Okay, it's the next day and I'm just gonna end this video off. I was so tired yesterday after finishing, but let me just show you all of the food in the fridge. It looks so, I love, this just looks so satisfying. And knowing that everything that I'm gonna be eating over the next God knows how long is there ready and waiting. Some of it might end up going in the freezer after a couple of days, but I feel accomplished, let's just say that. Um, so we've got, hang on, so, so we actually managed to make 22 meals out of that, which I don't think is too bad at all, especially for one person. Um, yeah, I feel buzzing. <laughs> So I am just going to end this video here because we are all done. Let me know what your favourite thing to batch cook is in the comments and maybe I might give it a go. I'm always looking for things and new recipes to try. But yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please go and give it a thumbs up. Go hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to be notified for when I do upload, then hit the bell as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Baby, let me love you, let me love you.